Good morning everyone. So finally here we are. We have finally gotten to calculus. And well, to start discussing some of the concepts uh, on, in calculus, we'll need to understand first what's the limit. So there will be several times in which we'll, we might have a function like a not very, sorry, a not very straight or predictable right function and we might want to calculate some tangent lines right now there are some applications of this for example if this is a speed speed time graph right let's say this is speed or velocity usually we use letter V um, if we get the tangent lines here it would be an acceleration right so if we if we manage to get a tangent line at a certain point we would get in this case if this was a velocity time graph we would get an instantaneous acceleration now moreover if this was instead a displacement or distance time graph then those tangent lines would give us simply the velocity right instantaneous velocity or instantaneous speed but now what does what what consists then of this concept of limit? So let's see. So let's say that we have a function f of x equals x squared. Right? All of you should know how this function looks like. It's a quadratic, right? Quite simple, goes through 0, 0, right? Um, so all of us should be able to easily plot this function should look something like that. It's a parabola, it's mirrored, right, um, through the y-axis. There you go. So that's our f of x equals x squared. Now let's say that I want to find the value at a certain point. So let's say I want to find out when x is 2, what would be. This is not up to scale, obviously, but let's say um, close to 2, what would be the values of this function? So what we can do, we can basically basically approximate this point either from the right of my function or from the left. If I approach this point from both sides and it's the same value, then we say that this is the limit of our function. So in this case, x squared I'll show you some values if we try to get closer and closer. So if we get a point around here, or closer, closer, what would happen? So take a look here. I've made a table, so I'm getting x closer and closer to 2. But I don't actually get 2. You can see that I'm getting close um, as 1.9999, but I'm not getting to 2. So if I do 1 squared, I would get 1. 1.9 squared, I will get 3.61, and so forth. So you can see that the square of my number is slowly, well, actually quite quickly, um, but it's getting closer and closer to 4. I could do exactly the same thing now from the other side. So this is approaching my point. So this this table here shows what when I'm approaching from the negative Right, um, sorry, from the left of my function. What if I approach from the right of my of the point where I want to find in my function? Well, let's say that I start exactly one now to the right of my point. So at three, if I do square as nine, now 2.1, I'm getting to the left now. I'm getting closer and closer to the point of my function. So, for example, if this was just a, a part of my function, let's say this is two. So we started at three. And in the other side, I started at 1, then I went to 1.9, right? And here I got to 2.1, and then I got to 2.01, 1.99. So I'm getting close to this point. And I can see that, well, this is getting closer and closer to 4. This is also getting closer and closer to 4. So we can just say that the limit of this function f of x when x approaches 2 is 4. And then we, we could then state this, 
well, informal definition of the limit, which, well, if f of x can be made as close as we like to some real number a, in this case a was 4, right? We were getting closer and closer to 4. By making x sufficiently close but not equal to a, so you can see here it's not exactly 4, but it's getting close to 4. You can see that it's getting there. Now, um, then we say that f of x has a limit of a as x approaches a, and we write limit x um, going towards a of f, of f of x when x approaches a equals capital A. In this case, f of x is said to converge to a as x approaches a. The opposite of this is when it diverges. If you had a function, for example, let's say that I've got... Um, what if I had a function with a discontinuity, discontinuity, discontinuity like this, right? In this point here, if I approach from the right, I would be getting towards negative infinity, and from the left, I would be getting towards positive infinity. So here, there will be no limit at this point, different from the example that I've shown you before. So let's see another example now, quite a simple one. Let's say I've got a function f of x, 5x plus x squared over x. And I want to find the limit when x goes towards 0. So I would write this limit x towards 0, f of x. And then I don't know. Now, if I look at this function, if I'm approaching this function from the left, so we could try a few, a few values, right? And we could also approach this from the right and try a few, few values. However, if we observe this function here, um, we could factorize this. So we could get x, 5 plus x over x, right? And then we could um, get rid of this x, which is 5 plus x. Now, there is one condition here, right? x has to be different than 0, because even though I've expressed f of x in another way, there is a condition here, see, x cannot be 0, because if x is 0, I wouldn't be able to simplify this. So this is exactly a situation where the limits come into place, because this function would not have a value when x is 0. So we're going to get as close to 0 as we can, and we will analyze if we go towards it from the left or from the right, and if we're going to get to, towards a certain value. right? Now, we can observe this, that if we get x close to 0, this will get close to 5. So the limit would be 5 here, right? Remember, this is not f of 0, right? f of 0 is not defined. This is the limit of this function when x goes close to 0, when x approaches 0. Now, just a few examples here. Right? You can pause this and try it yourself. Now, letter A, limit of x squared when x approaches 2. Well, you can actually do this. There's no limitation for x squared, so this is simply 4. Now, limit of x squared plus 3x over x when x approaches 0. Now, this one, right, so f of x is x squared plus 3x over x. Now we would be able to factorize here x. So we make a we make x our subject. So x, x plus 3 over x, and then we could get rid of this x. But remember, x has to be different than 0, otherwise you wouldn't be able to, to cross that out. x plus 3. So if x is approaching 0, this would be approaching 3. 
Now what about this last one? Um, well, factorize as well. Let's call it g of x. Right, so x squared minus 9 and x minus 3. So here on top, if you remember your, your algebra correctly, it's a difference of squares. So that's x plus 3, x take away 3 over x take away 3. So we can cross out those x minus 3s and we get x plus 3. So the limit of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3 when x approaches 3 would be the same thing as the limit of x plus 3. Right? The limit will be the same. This is not the same function. Right? Because here we're assuming, for example, when we simplify this, we're assuming that x is different than 3. Otherwise, we would have another zero denominator, which we cannot have. Um, if this was the case, then we wouldn't be able to, to simplify this. Anyway, so if this approaches 3, my value would approach 6. And basically, that's it.